In lab, you guys looked at separation, separating charges and then measuring how much charge was on objects. You also looked at charging different objects. Uh, but the very first thing we have to understand is that you did not create or destroy charge. Rather, charge exists and you're able to separate it. And you guys are aware of this. We know that atoms have a nucleus in the middle and that that nucleus is positively charged and around the nucleus are electrons and those electrons have a negative charge but the net charge is zero because the total number of positives and negatives adds up. It turns out when you guys took the two charge separators and you rub whether it's a piece of plastic through cloth or a piece of glass through cloth you're just transferring charge. So when you take a piece of glass and you rub it through a piece of cloth uh, what happens is electrons actually move from the glass to the cloth uh, and that leaves this thing with extra protons and this thing with extra electrons so you didn't actually create any charge you just moved it around so these are going to have opposite charges but equal in magnitude so the same amount of charge is just opposite there are only two types of charge positive and negative and they were randomly assigned Ben Franklin did it uh, and he said the charge that a glass rod holds is positive and so the other charge uh, charge that a plastic piece would hold is negative. Um, now the conservation of charge just says you're not creating or destroying charge which means if you moved four electrons over here then this has got a four minus charge and this has got a four plus charge but the total amount of charge didn't change. Once you have a charged object you can charge other objects. So we have this thing that has say excess negative charge on it. Uh, if we bring it up next to a conductor, and a conductor allows charge pieces to flow through it pretty easily, then first what happens is the negatives in this thing are going to be pushed away, uh, and the positives are going to be drawn close, so the charge separates. It's still neutral. It has no net charge, but uh, the charges have moved apart from each other. If we then touch this piece to this piece, these charges are going to flow until uh, the charge on each one is the same. So if this one started minus 4 and this one started 0, afterwards they might end up minus 2, minus 2. Uh, the overall amount of charge hasn't changed, it's just been redistributed. And then when we take this piece back away, this thing ends up with a minus 2 charge and this thing ends up with a minus 2 charge. So both objects now have a charge. Because you actually touch this object and allowed charge to transfer to it, that's called charging by conduction. But that's not the only method. If, uh, say you had an object that was a neutral to start with, so it has the same amount of pluses and minuses, uh, and you brought up our negatively charged rod to it, uh, what would happen is, you're not touching, but same thing, right? These charges would separate. Negative would get pushed this direction, uh, and so we'd end up with the positive on one side, negative on the other. If you then take and connect a wire to this thing that goes to ground, then by ground we literally mean Earth. Earth is huge, it's able to store charge, it's a giant reservoir of charge. This is actually going to allow these electrons to actually flow away from this piece. Uh, and then if we then cut this wire, then when we remove this thing, even though nothing's pushing those charges anymore, they're not going to come back. So this thing still has a negative charge, and now this piece over here is going to have the opposite charge. It'll, be, it'll have a positive charge because we forced the negatives out of it. That is called charging by induction. We didn't have to touch this. We induced a charge on it uh, by getting things close. And in fact, that's one of the cool things about uh, what we've been messing around with on these charges, is these things can exert forces on each other through a distance. Uh, and we're going to get into how much force they exert in our next unit. Now the last thing to look at is how, how we measure charge. Charge is actually measured in units called coulombs, um, uh, given the symbol capital C. A coulomb is an insane amount of charge. We never deal with the charge of one coulomb. Uh, an electron has the smallest possible charge uh, for, for particles we come in contact with, and it has a charge of 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19th coulombs. 
and technically an electron is negative. So negative 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19th coulombs. A proton has exactly the opposite charge, 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19th coulombs, but it is positive. Okay? So those are the two charges that those are those are the fundamental charges electrons and protons uh, so it turns out charges is discrete it's not continuous they come in steps right we can have a charge of negative 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19th and then we can double that and then we can add another one we can add another one so we can have a charge here and we can have a charge here and we can have a charge here but the charges in between don't exist however since the step is so small it acts continuous we don't really have to worry about it but this is an example of quantized energy or quantized charge quantum or quantized just means it comes in discrete steps it's not a continuous thing now what can we do with this well we could figure out how many extra electrons something has so if you had a disk uh... let's say you had a one coulomb charge if you had some object that did have one coulomb of charge on it how many uh, and negative one coulomb. First, I'm going to ask how many, which type of particle does it extra of, and it has extra electrons because it's negative. And then I want to know how many extra. Uh, and so what you would do to do this is say, okay, well, one coulomb divided by the charge of one electron, 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19th, uh, and that's going to get you a fairly large number. That gets you. 6.25 times 10 to the 18th electrons.